Okay, so good afternoon uh, to everybody. We are um, going to start our next scientific webinar. Today presenter will be Stefano Perini, who is a uh, uh, part of the Manuskills project, and the title of today's webinar is Manuskills Approach Raising Students' Awareness in Manufacturing. And right now, I am passing the floor to the to, to the to our presenter, so Stefano. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, so good afternoon, uh, good afternoon, everybody. The title of the presentation that I'm going to provide together with my colleague Paul Hans and Hans uh, of uh, Ulburg University is uh, using a city-based delivery mechanism to attract young talent to manufacturing. I would like just to give a quick, uh, a quick schedule of the of the presentation that we are going to provide you. And uh, the first, in particular, the first 10 minutes will be just a quick introduction about the the project manuskill. So its uh, background, its motivation, its mission, and uh, then a quick overview of the all of the experiments. That in uh, the next following 15 minutes, I'm going to provide a more detailed view, a specific view about the experiment Echo Factory, and then I. I, my colleague uh, Paul, uh, Paul Hansen will present in detail the other experiment for, uh, for today's webinar, that is the Lego Exploratorium. Then we, we think to reserve the last 20 minutes, 15 minutes for uh, question and answer. So we will uh, try to uh, answer your question that uh, we will collect in, uh, thanks to, to the chat. So according to this agenda, I would go ahead. And uh, yes, yeah, sure, I'm going to use uh, the webcam. I'm going to. Okay, I think that now you can see me. Good afternoon. Okay, so as, uh, as just mentioned, I would go ahead with the first uh, presentation of the uh, manuscript, a quick presentation explaining what is the background and motivation behind uh, our, our experiments. So uh, first of all, our, uh, our main problem that you're trying to face, the very general problem that is facing all of Europe, is the so-called talent gap in manufacturing. Then uh, we, we can provide you with a lot of data, a lot of statistics about this, uh, this problem that is uh, well known by both institutions and uh, companies. But uh, uh, I would uh, go ahead just saying that uh, this is a very, very huge problem today from two different perspectives. The one perspective that is inside the companies that uh, uh, really uh, really can't, uh, can't manage to find all of the, the different skills that are needed uh, inside their, uh, their enterprise. So uh, with the current workforce and uh, on the other hand, we have with, uh, also, they have also a lot of difficulties on the recruitment, on the recruitment of all of the, the needed competencies uh, from, the, from the school, so from the STEM pipeline and in particular from universities. So uh, we are focusing in particular as manuscript project on this second aspect, which is the one on the, uh, on the teaching, so on the formation of the different, uh, of the different uh, uh, students, the different talents that will uh, uh, most likely join uh, manufacturing uh, in, a, in a second moment as a career option. And, uh, one of the problems in particular that we are trying to solve is uh, the one of uh, try to uh, improve the understanding, the understanding of uh, youngster of manufacturing and in particular the awareness and the attraction towards this, uh, this discipline because uh, we think that uh, it is uh, unfortunately very often to disregard and to, uh, and to less known by, by young generation. 
basically uh, we identified, uh, been identified in literature, uh, more or less five uh, different uh, uh, skill uh, gap root, uh, root causes. And uh, I would just quickly mention what are the, the, the main, and the main are an aging workforce, so basically the workforce is becoming older, and so there is a lack of uh, new talents that uh, can uh, improve the situation with their new skills and their uh, new capabilities. Then outdated workforce planning, uh, a problem, let's say, uh, of uh, limited uh, efficiency from the education side. Then for sure also the problem of the change, uh, changing nature of work, because it's coming from a traditional, let's say, desk work, uh, from a more interactive uh, and uh, with a lot of uh, interdisciplinary competencies that should be, uh, should be put together in order to provide, finally, the results. And then finally, as I was mentioning before, the poor image of manufacturing, is, unfortunately, uh, it seems like a big problem in the, in the younger generation, with young people thinking that manufacturing is not a suitable, a suitable work for, uh, for their lives, and with an Im image of manufacturing that uh, is uh, still focused on uh, many years ago, let's say 20, 30 years ago, when in the meanwhile manufacturing uh, has been evolving a lot with clean uh, workplace and also advanced, uh, and also advanced uh, solution uh, for, uh, for the workers and for the factories uh, as a whole. What is our focus? Our focus is in particular then uh, the following. Here you can see the uh, so-called leaking stem pipeline. Uh, as you know, the stem pipeline is uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And so uh, you can see the wall, like cycle of the of students from children. Then we have teenagers, we have uh, young adults, and uh, finally adults. For sure, as I said before, we are not going to address the adults with this project, so the workforce itself inside the companies, but just focusing on the education side. So trying to target children, especially from 8 to 10 years old on, then teenagers and young adults. And with young adults, we are, we are meaning in particular the university students that we are also addressing in, uh, in this project, even if uh, this will not be the focus of the of the of the present uh, of the present webinar, but we will focus especially on uh, the late children, let's say so, from uh, eight to ten years old, and then teenagers. So, trying to combat the disillusionment that you can see that is draw in uh, in the image. So, the disillusionment, sorry, towards uh, uh, STEM in general and in particular. Uh, with the manufacturing that we are trying to solve. So our proposal, our support proposal as a contribution to the, to the solution of this kind of problem is, uh, is what we can call the Manuscript Mission. And uh, the main aim of Manuscript Mission is uh, the study of different uh, uh, ICT-based technologies. So that can be a serious game, can be simulation, can be virtual reality application, and so on. And together, obviously, with the learning and training methodologies, so not only the ICT aspect, but uh, a combination of the ICT aspect with uh, the learning and teaching one, in order to improve, uh, improve uh, the, the image and awareness of uh, manufacturing uh, for, the, for the youngsters, in order to provide a picture, a realistic picture of, the, of what the, the, the actually the work in manufacturing field uh, could be for uh, for them, for the new generation. As I just as I just said, there uh, there will be different uh, delivery mechanisms possible. So uh, you can see here a very quick, uh, very brief uh, uh, explanation of uh, our our concept. So for sure, we will have a demand of this kind of skills that is uh, it's coming from the youngster. Then we have a supply, a lot of knowledge that is inside the universities, inside the companies, that uh, obviously should be elaborated by means of these uh, different delivery mechanisms, and then offered to, uh, to the children 
obviously not only to the children, to the youth in general, but to, uh, also with the contribution of parents on one side and on teacher, obviously, on the other, in order to provide a solution that is feasible and that uh, has uh, effectively an impact for, uh, for the students. In particular, uh, I would like to resum the expected impact of our action, of our activities, basically in the following three points. So first of all, uh, what we would like to do with this project and with this experiment uh, is to understand how manufacturing education can be more attractive and more effective for young talent in order to become a real choice for, uh, for their career. Then on um, as a second step, uh, I can mention the, the study of the, how to facilitate the transformative deep learning of individuals. So basically, how to uh, use this kind of technologies not only to attract, but also to provide and improve the competencies, the specific competencies of, the, of these, uh, of these uh, youngsters. Obviously, this is uh, an objective that is more related to uh, university students, but uh, can uh, also be related somehow to, to the youngsters, and so to the first point. Then our final objective, our final objective is to collect, according to uh, the voice of the practitioners and uh, the results, the concrete results that we are going to collect, uh, and to build uh, uh, lessons learned that can be used as guidelines and recommendations in general for the use of uh, ICT-based delivery mechanism for uh, uh, manufacturing companies, that information that can be used for the companies on one hand, but also for national and international institutions in order to set up uh, uh, policies that can be uh, useful in order to improve the situation for uh, the education and training in, uh, in manufacturing, uh, manufacturing field. Just a very, a very quick overview of the consortium. Uh, you can see that uh, there are different uh, uh, partners from all, all over Europe. On the right, you can see our three uh, company partners. So we have TNUs, the Soul System, and High Skills. And then we have, uh, on the other hand, uh, research and academ academic partners. So Politecnico di Milano, this is my institution. Then we have uh, Oldborg University, this is the institution of uh, Professor Hansen. Then we have uh, the uh, LMS uh, laboratory from the University of Patras. Then uh, the Ecole Polytechnique Federal de Lausanne. And finally, Sintef, that is uh, uh, Norwegian, uh, Norwegian Research Center. I'm going to provide now a very quick overview of the four experiments. Uh, we have the LEGO Exploratorium that is, uh, has been developed by Oldborg University, so by the team of uh, Professor Hansen. Uh, it is targeting in particular teenagers and also young adults, so university students. And as a delivery mechanism at the moment has uh, a combination of videos and simulation and different learning paths. Then the second experience is uh, uh, called uh, how to build a skateboard, and the developers are uh, the Soul System and Tunis, that are two uh, very famous uh, French enterprises. The target group is uh, uh, specifically teenagers, uh, and the delivery mechanism are virtually reality interaction and simulation combined together. Third of all, we have the Eco Factory that I'm going to present in a while and has been developed by Politecnico di Milano, Sintet and Life Skills, is targeting both children and teenagers and is in particular a serious game. And finally, we have the interactive product assembly developed by the LMS laboratory of the University of Patras, that is targeting teenagers and young adults, and it is a pure virtual reality interaction. You can find all these uh, experiments at the following link that you, it is uh, freely and uh, open uh, accessible, and you, so you can uh, take note of this uh, of this uh, link where you go, you can go and uh, uh, try all the uh, all the experiments together with the supporting material anytime uh, anytime you want. At the moment, uh, so you're. You are welcome to visit this, uh, this link. What uh, uh, we are going to present uh, in a while are Ecofactor and Ecoexploratorium. And uh, about this 
two presentations that you are going to do. We would be happy to receive your, your comments and your ideas about how to improve and to make uh, uh, effectively implementable in, uh, in the classroom uh, these, uh, these experiments. We have prepared for this occasion a proper form that you can uh, fill in and send, uh, send us back, then we will, uh, uh, we will understand how to do it in, uh, in, a, in an efficient way. And uh, for the other two experiments that will be, will be explained, will be showed during the next uh, webinar that will be held on the 8th of June by my, my colleague, our colleague Maria Margudi from uh, APSL. So what I'm going to present now is uh, in particular the EcoFactory experience. Uh, that is, uh, we can call it uh, as an introduction to manufacturing and, uh, and environment. I, I like to call it an introduction to manufacturing and environment because it basically is uh, a simple, a simple but realistic way, in my opinion, to present manufacturing, but also uh, to explain uh, to, to, to the students, to the children, to the teenagers, that is not only to produce and pollute manufacturing, but it's a complex activity involving uh, also the care for, uh, for the environment, uh, and so a complex mix uh, of different uh, decisions that should address uh, both the production side and also the economic side, and also, and especially the environmental one. So, what I would like to do is to show you directly an example, so I will navigate to the application in real time in order to show you how the, the serious game, this serious game uh, look like and, and, and function. So basically, uh, you can see this introduction where uh, Basically, this, this trade-off, uh, this trade-off of objective that I just explained is uh, is uh, presented in detail by by Jay, that is uh, the assistant of the students uh, during uh, during during the game, and uh, you know that uh, manufacturing basically uh, main aim is uh, to produce things, to produce products in uh, the right at the right time, in the right place, and with the right amount. And obviously, for doing this, uh, you have also to avoid uh, and try to optimize the problem, the, uh, the, the pollution problem, and so all the natural resources that uh, uh, can be and should be used for this kind of production. And uh, as a learner, as a player, uh, the student uh, is uh, basically for, uh, for this game, the, uh, the, the owner of this factory, of this mini factory that we call the Eco Factory, and should, should be uh, so trying to produce uh, all the products that are requested by the market, by uh, by, but by taking care also of the different uh, environmental uh, factors and, and economical factors that they should be put together in a non-trivial way in order to obtain the final result. So basically, we are going to, to, to select uh, the TV, the TV that is uh, quite uh, a quite common, uh, a quite common um, product, and uh, you can see now that uh, you have different, uh, uh, you have different. Um, indicators on, uh, on the right that are cost, environment, and society. And uh, at the same time, you have to guarantee that uh, your product is designed well, that uh, the proper machines are put on the shop floor of the, of the, of the industry, and that uh, your human resources are, are uh, the ones that are right in order to produce uh, what you want to do. So you can see here uh, that is a clear and detailed indication of all the steps that you have to do. And this indication that you, you can see on, uh, on the screen is just uh, the one that I'm assuming by, by speaking now. So basically what you have to do is to go first uh, on uh, the office where you have uh, the possibility or to design your product or to hire different human resources but uh, as your assistant before said, then it's better to start with the product design where you have different components and you have uh, different 
different choices for each component with different uh, uh, environmental and economic uh, performances that you have to take into account. You can see in real time on, uh, on the right the different impact of your choices according to uh, what you are going to choose uh, with your, uh, with your uh, uh, product design. You can also read the, the market forecast for your industry. These are information that are provided and uh, that uh, can help you in uh, how to do the right choice. For example, we can see in, uh, in the first line, uh, for example, an indication about the increase of demand, so the increase of demand uh, from the market in, uh, in the next 10 years. And there are some information that obviously are not, uh, can not lead you to a precise indication, but just to some suggestion. So, for example, I, I would go quickly to choose some, uh, some uh, components for each, uh, for each uh, so, sorry, some option for each component. So I'm choosing the plastic for the casing and for the electronics to be simple. Then I, I can save. And I have to put obviously the machine. I can choose the machine according to the cost and environment and society impact and put it on the right place uh, on the shop floor. Finally, you have to remember, obviously, the assembler. I try to execute, but there is a problem that I have to hire also the, the right people because it is not, not always a problem only of uh, products and, and machine that should be designed and put on, uh, on the shop floor, but obviously a problem of skills and competencies that I have to guarantee to the, to the plant. So I have a team of workers with different skills. I have different requirements, obviously. So from the low skill, the medium skill, and the high skill worker. Anyway, there is an initial constraint, but I can choose um, the number of uh, operators of the workers that uh, that I would like to have. But obviously, this with uh, with uh, an impact on salary cost. But on the other hand, with a positive impact on society. So I'm just uh, choosing the right number for the moment. And finally, I'm able to execute, so to produce what is requested by, by the market. Finally, obviously, you can see the results. So the impact on uh, production waste, on the emissions, on the cost of society, and see the different uh, uh, trade-off between uh, the choices that you have done. So we have all both qualitative, qualitative charts and also more detailed one with the waste. So the the cumulated one and the and the, 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 the um, sorry, the, um, the instantaneous one. Then you can see also the emissions, financials, and production. Then obviously, you can improve your results by, for example, going again on product design. For example, choosing and according to your choice, the impact on cost environment change. And so you can improve your performances, both in terms of uh, money, but especially in terms of uh, environment and also society. So it's just a, a trial to change the parameter and see what happens. Obviously, I have to put uh, new machines because I, I did different choices. Then I have to see if I have uh, enough, the right number, no. I can uh, put the right number. Here I have to put more high skilled workers. Here I can put uh, even more, it's not a constraint. Then I can save. 
and see if according to the performances on the right, finally, I realized to do, to do better than the first round. Now we will have the result in a, in a second. So you can, I can see again uh, the positive result of the single uh, of the single run, and then see the different uh, uh, impact on waste. For example, we have uh, the car, so we we can see the the impact over time of the single choice, but also how the maximum that before was uh, around uh, sixty-seven thousand. Now it is definitely less. And again, I can see the weights that are being accumulated. Again, the emissions that uh, increase, the financial capital that uh, had a, a bit of decrease and then uh, remained stable, and finally the production that. Uh, Remain stable because no particular strikes or change in the market finally finally happen. So basically, now this was uh, a presentation of uh, what can be done. Our suggestion, our suggestion is uh, to try to try on your own uh, this kind of application that you can see. At the at the link uh, the platform that I provided you before, that is demo.manuskill.org, where you can find also the other experiments, and then try and use this one, and provide also to us with your with your feedback, and also uh, tell us if you are interested to, to test it and see how this uh, application be, uh, can be effective for students and can be in case obviously improved with the specific change to the logic and to the learning objectives. This was a quick, very quick uh, introduction to EcoFactory. What I would like to do now is to uh, let uh, Professor Paul Hansen of Oxford University speak and present uh, in detail the other experiment of today, that is the Lego Exploratorium. So, Paul, if you are uh, uh, online, I can uh, I can move uh, the the slides. I can be I can still be the the manager of the presentation, and uh, you can speak. Just speak, let me just give me an advice when I have to to move on. If 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 I just say flip, Stefano, you will flip. Yeah, sure. That's good. So, hello, everybody. <clears throat> I'll continue this presentation with one of the other uh, applications that comes out of the the, the Manuscales uh, platform, and it's called the the Lego Exploratorium. Uh, we have we have uh, we have taken uh, different uh, approaches, the, the the different participants of the project. This one is kind of uh, built from from the scratch, uh, built. With a kind of interaction with the the teachers and and the students in particular, so flip, uh, and we have tried to to uh, take a living lab approach, where basically we have set uh, down teachers from different specializations, from from different fields, and asked them the uh, question: What is good and motivating teaching uh, within the broad discipline of manufacturing? Flip. And, what, and, and secondly, what are the difficulties and the barriers in delivering good and motivating uh, teaching within the broad discipline of manufacturing? Flip. And uh, as, as, as she illustrated here, uh, we had uh, made a number of workshops, uh, open workshops, where we have uh, set down teachers from, from these various disciplines and, and, and uh, ha having a kind of an open discussion. Uh, when have you experienced, or how do you experience good teaching, and and um, and uh, how can it be supported by the ideas of of menu skills? How can it be supported even further by uh, ICT? Uh, how can it be kind of uh, developed in a in a kind of a collaborative effort somehow? Flip. 
Secondly, we have bought, uh, brought the, the teachers together with some of the industrial companies because uh, inevitably the companies are those who hold the experiences. So we would like to, we would like to, to, to have uh, the experiences within uh, kind of the, the application. So, so this is um, this is uh, again done in a in a kind of an open collaborative atmosphere with the um, with the, with the, the companies. So, but also the teachers bring in their wishes and wants for for this particular uh, kind of uh, this this approach. Flip. And secondly, we had discussed with students, kind of uh, how did you uh, when or how how do you experience a good and motivating teaching? Uh, these have been both uh, young adults, meaning uh, young students from universities, from the first years of, of universities, but also high school students, uh, and 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 uh, kind of taking let let them kind of report openly what what does motivate us, and 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 secondly, what do we know about uh, manufacturing and at all, and it kind of supports some of the initial problems that that Stefano pointed to that. A lot of these students, a lot of these students in particular in the high school, really have not considered to 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 make any career within manufacturing, which kind of highlights uh, the the problem for the manufacturing industry. So, uh, if we go to to some of the inside, uh, then uh, it proves quite. Uh, equal from, from the various groups that both students and teachers are highly motivated by real life, realistic and updated cases. Cases that they can relate to, meaning that uh, cases from, 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 from kind of their own uh, local environment or at least uh, from their own uh, language environment. And this is really supported by a current textbook. Most of the textbooks today have cases from a big, uh, big, com uh, big corporations that only a few st students can relate to. So, so that's problem number one. And flip. Also, uh, in particular, the teachers uh, point out that there's a very rich potential of video material available. There's also a lot of informative web pages from different suppliers. Uh, but they say, but but all of them report that it's it's very difficult and it's very time consuming to get an overview, and for and secondly, it's it's quite difficult to verify quarters, and and you cannot really be make sure that the videos are available the next time around. So so there's there's a lot of of of, of there's a lot of high potential, but there's a lot of difficulties. Yep. Uh, the companies, on the, on, the, on their hand, report that they are quite willing to deliver content, but they, they report also that they find requests from institutions uh, rather unfocused and very uncoordinated. So they say that, well, sometimes we have one request uh, one day and another request quite similar another day. So, so after a while, uh, the, the company kind of uh, go tired, a bit tired on this, uh, but of course, still willing to to cooperate if 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 uh, the teacher side, if the institution side can provide some kind of organization. So so here we are really kind of uh, having a, a challenge. Flip. Uh, what we've kind of divided our our efforts into, uh, as you see on on the left side, uh, young adult, teenagers, and and potentially children. In this case, children are, has not been part of, of, of this uh, kind of application. But uh, the levels of, of insight has been divided into awareness, interest, and application. Flip. And kind of uh, uh, the, the idea is that we generate the, the, the insight from application at, at, the, at, the, at the companies and kind of divide it between, uh, or kind of uh, distribute it uh, with both application, interest, and awareness among the young adults, and let this content develop to uh, kind of a refined content or, or kind of reduced content that is used among teenagers. Thereby, we get the most out of the information we get from companies, 
and thereby we can provide them the, the best and the richest uh, material so far. So that's the basic idea. Flip. Uh, we had we had a long discussion with the teachers, and 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 one of the interesting thing that came out was to say, well, if 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 it ought to be used uh, broad within a number of fields, it has to be simple. So so we discussed back and forth, and and ended up with a kind of a a small kind of Lego minifigure. Uh, we had the discussion, and many many teachers initially said when they saw it, say. This is too simple. It, it it cannot be done. But then we when we started to 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 look upon it from from various uh, disciplines, it proved that actually it it became enough complex that it could be interesting. So so we started to define a number of challenges where we work closer with companies, but also work with different fields within um, in focusing on, on this uh, minifigure. Uh, you see here eight of the challenges. The challenges actually uh, developed from, from, from time to time because whenever we have tried it with one uh, class, with one setting, we kind of take in their experiences and, and, and take the experience from the teachers, also take in new experiences from the companies and let them uh, kind of uh, in, in kind of let them uh, go into the to, to the to the the project. Flip. Here you see uh, the initial plot that we have have used in all the cases. It's like you have two persons that have a small company. Flip. Uh, you see uh, uh, they have a, an injection molding machine, plastic injection molding machine in the back. Flip. And here, basically, you see their their facility. It's an eight by eight meter facility. So this is their initial uh, production setting, and and that's where they are going to start the production. So so we set them off here, and we give them a challenge. Say uh, you have to produce two hundred fifty thousand uh, minifigures. Flip. And here you see uh, the challenge number one. They have to use these. Eight different uh, plastic parts. Here we use intensively uh, video materials. So uh, the students have an introduction to materials. They have introduction to injection molding. They have in 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 introduction to to any part of the operation that is associated with this. So and and of course they can access the videos whenever they want to. Uh, and they have very simple planning tools also of, of how to plan a production. So, so basically, they are in charge as, as a as a kind of a, as a manager of this operational site, uh, and 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 it's it's it proved to be uh, very motivating. We, we have we had uh, already from the beginning, uh, some of the teachers uh, pointed out say well. Uh, we would like to have applications that are based on uh, kind of real information. That means that the information we have are the real machinery, are the real materials, are kind of real by any means. So, so, so whatever we do is based on the right uh, uh, kind of uh, process times of the processing which they can uh, eventually dive into in, in kind of the physics classes. Uh, we have uh, kind, of, uh, uh, kind of materials that, that also they can, they can go deeper in, in their, in their uh, physics classes. But, but, but the driving thing is that it has to be real. It has to be the real uh, cost. It has to be the real uh, materials. Flip. <laughs> So, so, so as we as we develop uh, the case now, we've been running for a bit more than a year. You see, this is uh, the most recent setup we have, where you have uh, the small green round ones that symbolize workers. We have uh, the squared uh, uh, green ones that symbolize injection molding machine. You have the orange one that symbolize intermediate uh, 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 stocks. And then you have the brown ones with with the with kind of the the, the bluish and and the greenish thing on top, and that's the the the, the automation machinery that do the decoration. So so whenever uh, kind of uh, we develop our setup to to real Lego minifigures, 
then we need to decorate them, of course. Flip. So, so, so we start in increasing the challenges, and first students are getting simple tasks, but then we increase uh, kind of the level of, of complexity. We do increase also uh, the requirements for the, the machinery in the production. So they have to buy the right machinery in order to to produce um, uh, the request. The, 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 we kind of we emphasize a, a game plot here that uh, we provide them orders. So so the, the students normally they work in team of of two or three, but the students can accept the orders, and if they accept the order, they accept when they are going to deliver. And they also accept the price that's offered them. So, so, so we kind of created a, a, a competition within uh, the team. Also, this, this of course is, is can be scaled to a, to an online version. So, for the moment, we are working on an online version where we can have teams competing across uh, within the country and, of course, uh, uh, across countries. And we provide also uh, slides, additional slides for the teachers. We co-create these slides with the teachers, so so we kind of invite the teachers to go in in kind of a cooperation and and develop the materials. So so it's it's slowly developing to a, a small community that are kind of self-driven. Of course, it has to be supported by. Uh, the the kind of uh, the the uh, by the uh, some kind of platform collaborative platform and that's what we are working on for the moment. Flip. So so and here you see uh, the final challenges as, as you see the challenges here will increase uh, for for every step and and as I said before uh, as soon as we have done it once when a class uh, the, the the class will also get an assignment and say, how can you improve this? What did you find most uh, kind of challenging? What did you find most motivating? And and the suggestions that we get from the students will then be kind of uh, incorporated in, in, in the following uh, versions of it. So So for the moment, I believe we are in version number seven or eight, and uh, we are still continuing to, to roll out. We will have uh, most of, of uh, we will have uh, 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 a couple of hundred uh, high school students the next time around uh, to, 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 to test it further. Also, as, as I said, we use it in the first part of, of, the, of the, uh, the college study where it's, it's kind of uh, exposed to students that are not within manufacturing but do somehow have to have some kind of, of opinion about manufacturing. So I think that's uh, and that do, do kind of uh, finalize my part. So thank you from here. Back to Stefano. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Paul. And uh, okay, this was uh, the, um, so the, the second experiment presented today. And uh, here you can see. Obviously, we will uh, we'll provide you with uh, with uh, the, the the presentation. Anyway, you can see uh, here our contact in order to uh, further discuss the, what we are present today. If you are interested, and uh, finally, I think we are uh, just a five minutes later with the agenda, so we can go with uh, with questions if uh, if you agree. Yes, so now we will open the question session. Um, Stefano, uh, as I agreed before, please read the question and maybe some of them are already answered, uh, but maybe you have still something to add from you or from Paul, maybe. Uh, it's up to you. Please uh, um, go over the questions and see if you have anything to, to add. Okay? Okay. Please read the, read the question first, so we make sure that we all know which question is um, answered. Okay. Okay. So, okay, I'm trying to just. Uh, okay. 
I okay the first uh, the first question that I see and uh, I see it's uh, uh, no okay okay the first question is uh, what do you mean by teenagers what age is uh, the target group okay uh, I think that for uh, for the following uh, if I can answer the question I will answer in case of questions that maybe uh, are focused on, on a um, poll presentation of that uh, poll with, uh, with on, on which poll would like to, to say something, I will uh, uh, let you poll answer. I think that is for the general uh, questions I can answer. So for te teenagers, uh, we are meaning in particular from, uh, from 12 to 19. So basically, uh, we have three target groups that are children, and with children we are not meaning from five, six, so from uh, let's say the first year of the primary school, but as I said before, from uh, uh, nine years old to, to 12, so including also the so-called twins between 10 and 12 years old, and this is the first target group, and then we have in general teenagers that are from 13 to to 19, uh, obviously we know that there are different, uh, there are a lot of differences between uh, uh, a student of 13 and a student of 18 years old. And uh, but let's say that these are just the general uh, target groups. And then each experiment, as you you could see, is a target for a specific uh, range of age that usually cover two or at most three three years. Okay, which software was it, was used to develop this application? Uh, I think that is, uh, this question is uh, referring to the uh, the Echo Factory, and basically this has been developed in uh, has been um, has been programmed in Java, and uh, for uh, the specific uh, details of the application that have been for the development. Uh, I uh, actually have to ask to our software developer that is for the, this experiment is, uh, is uh, um, iSkills, it is a software house because for that experiment as Polytechnic we provide the concept and the, and the model behind but for the specific name of the application used for the development I, I can ask iSkills and then we let you know afterwards, uh, maybe in, a, in an email, uh, this, uh, the name, the specific name. Then another question that is the following is, uh, how is the serious game different from a simulation? Okay, uh, honestly, uh, sometimes they are, uh, they, are uh, they, seem, they seem pretty, pretty close, uh, but the main difference is that uh, a simulation is, uh, is basically, uh, a real reproduction of uh, some kind of mechanism. And the serious game has uh, objectives, as constraints, uh, as dynamics that uh, are, as the name, uh, the name says, are connected to uh, the concept of a game uh, so in order to have a flow and to have an engagement, a different engagement of the user. A simulation is just a replication, let's say, of a uh, different mechanism, but without a precise uh, uh, game goals, without a specific constraint in uh, which I should move in order to obtain my goals, and uh, without, for example, scoring systems and, uh, and so on. The, diff uh, the, the basic difference is that uh, a simulation uh, reproduces uh, uh, in detail reality and the serious game uh, use the reality in order to present uh, uh, use a simulation maybe in order to present some concept but in a, in a gamified manner so maybe the extent of detail of the serious game is less than the one of the simulation that uh, is used in order to produce things that are real uh, while the objective of the serious game is just uh, to uh, engage the user in order to provide uh, some uh, some final uh, content, and in this case, uh, uh, the content is a learning one, and uh, the, uh, in particular about uh, manufacturing and how manufacturing can be sustainable. Uh, 
Is, uh, another question that I think is uh, again uh, related to to Ecofactory is uh, the following. Is there a statistical background? Are the trends made with statistical metadata? Uh, okay, uh, not actually. We used uh, realistic data. We started from a real data of uh, of um, of the relationship. Uh, we started from uh, technically uh, technical from a life cycle assessment uh, of uh, of a product, and then uh, so all the relationship between the economic and the environmental data are uh, are real. Then obviously, in order to uh, uh, the make the game uh, uh, usable by and understandable by by children and teenagers, we simplified some uh, some mechanism in order to have let's say uh, a model that empirically functions, but without uh, always a precise and and, and too uh, much detailed representation of reality because. Uh, this was our initial mistake, I admit, was to try to reproduce reality, but we noticed that it's necessary to, uh, without, uh, let's say, um, transmitting wrong messages, you have to simplify in order to be understandable and to make, uh, uh, to make the final objectives, uh, of, uh, the, the final learning objectives of your activity as clear as, uh, as much clear as possible. And this is what we are uh, also trying to, to do uh, in these days and uh, in this week. And it is our, I think, uh, is the, also the most challenging point uh, is to make this, this result understandable and to, to, uh, to send the right message, the right learning message to, uh, to the students without do, doing a thing that is too complicated, so, so too close to simulation and to statistics but uh, not that is not too simplified, so uh, giving the wrong message to, to the audience. It is possible, is it uh, sorry, possible uh, to address the data given by the student? Is the process captured? Yes, uh, we are working on it and we will uh, we'll finalize, uh, I think, in uh, one or two weeks, uh, a scoring system that track uh, basically the final result of the uh, of the of the students during the game. Even if our uh, our main uh, our uh, main focus is to try to measure the, the change in the awareness of the students who are manufacturing. For this reason, as you can see on uh, on the link that I provide you, uh, the link of the platform that I provide you. We have also a lot of, of uh, scientific material that uh, a lot of questionnaires, a lot of uh, uh, um, a lot of uh, um, let's say of uh, data that but that we were going to collect, but are not data on uh, on the game itself, not, but uh, on uh, the change in the perception of the students. For example, what we are going to do in uh, in one week in uh, one uh, middle school in uh, here in Italy is to, to track uh, the initial uh, perception of students by means uh, of uh, a questionnaire and uh, also uh, a drawing activity. Then to implement and to test this in a, in, a, in a pilot classroom, and then submit again the same. Uh, uh, the same questionnaire and the same uh, drawing activity and to see what changes are measured. Obviously for this we are not uh, uh, inventing uh, anything from scratch, but there are some uh, uh, structured and well-known and well-recognized uh, um, testing methods in literature that we are using for, uh, for this purpose. Uh, Given that uh, only five minutes, uh, we have only five minutes. Uh, if you um, if you agree, I would go uh, ahead with the questions uh, and the questions to uh, that are referring in particular to the exploratorium. Okay, but uh, no. Okay, I'm sorry. Just checking in real time. I see. That are in general order. 
two questions, if I'm not wrong, so I think there is time to answer also the two final, uh, the two final questions. Uh, and uh, another question, so is, uh, did you think to provide some explanation on each, on each choice? Uh, maybe students don't know about human resources, economical choice, what is the target group of the experiment? Okay, so the target group of the experiment uh, is uh, uh, 10, 12 years old. And uh, for the other, for the other, well, for the other questions, uh, is uh, we are working, uh, we are working at the moment on uh, the uh, more detailed definition of uh, uh, of the, the different choices that uh, can be made, and on adding information and uh, and data and explanation about the different uh, concepts that uh, are presented. We also had some feedback during the code design activities with the uh, uh, focus group of teachers that we did uh, in Italy and also in Switzerland. And uh, we already understood that uh, there are some problems in uh, maybe understanding some concepts that we consider as obvious but uh, are not obvious for, uh, for students. And for sure, so, so concepts like uh, human resources and uh, economic choices uh, uh, can be an obstacle. And our intention is, uh, on one hand, to create and improve the pedagogical scenario that you can see on, on the platform, and in order to provide a sort of background and, and the context for each uh, uh, pilot to be, to, be, to be done. And on the other hand, to provide more information directly in the game by means of a pop up and other things that uh, other elements that can be open in order to provide more information for each choice for example uh, what we are we are, uh, we are doing in uh, in, uh, in this week is to add the explanation also of the of the main aim of of the different uh, machine and on the characteristics and the utility of the different components inside the product. So I, I agree, I completely agree uh, that sometimes could be could be difficult, and we are also uh, managing to add uh, some uh, some more uh, more elements. For sure, we would be happy to send the whole presentation. Okay, uh, I see no uh, no more no more uh, no more questions. I don't know if Paul, do you want to add something about uh, uh, Lego Exploratorium? So about uh, some some or you want to correct something that I I, I said or to, or to add something? I think it, it could be most relevant to point to this question about uh, games and and uh, simulation, because that's uh, what kind of what what we got a reply from the teachers say. Well, uh, they would like to 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 have some kind of of gamification, but also in many cases they would like to be able to simulate reality. So so it's a kind of it, it's not either or. It's it's actually a dual. Uh, requirements. They will, in some times, we will do simulation because we want to be very focused on reality in order to kind of uh, illustrate, for instance, physical uh, uh, physical phenomena. In other cases, we want the game because we want to have something that is highly motivated and that is quite aggregated in terms of of disciplines. So, so, so we kind of play both of it, but we will let. Uh, the teachers that do the application uh, let them make their own choices in, in, in what direction they would like to take it. Okay, so thank you both very much for the very inspiring uh, presentation today. I think uh, I will just check one more time if we have any questions, but it looks like uh, if there is no more question, therefore, I think we can close today webinar. Thank you very much for your um, participation. Thank you very much uh, for the presentations. And um, I would like to invite you already today for the next scientific webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have Thank a good day. you. Thank you.
Have a nice day. Bye. 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 Have a nice evening. Bye. Bye. Bye.